graduates, please continue to stand. Good morning. Not bad. There's a lot of people here. Good morning. Much better. Welcome to Johnson College's 104th commencement ceremony. I'm Dr. Janine Engelman, Chief Academic Officer here at Johnson College. To start this celebration, I ask that you please stand, if you are able, for the playing of our national anthem. Graduates, today is a great day to reflect. I'm overwhelmed by your success stories. Stories like Maria Dombrowski from the Physical Therapist Assistant Program. Maria earned her Lee Silverman Voice Treatment BIG certification to help people with Parkinson's disease and other neurological conditions use their body better. Jeff Gallagher and Adley Mederick from the Welding Fabrication and Manufacturing Program, who have been accepted into the Boilermakers Union Local 13 in Philadelphia. Yeah. And Robbie Campen, Cole Kinsel, and Mike Carroll from the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Technology Program. They will all continue their education at the Southeast Lyman Training Center in Trenton, Georgia. As you may know, here at Johnson College, we offer a special program for high school students that allows them to earn college credit while still completing their high school graduation degree requirements. Some of these industry fast track students are motivated and hardworking enough to complete their degree before graduating from high school. This year we have nine of these high achieving industry fast track students graduating from Johnson College with either an academic certificate or an associate's degree. including Chandler Holmes, an industry fast track student from the Commonwealth Charter Academy, graduating from our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technology program, who earned the highest cumulative GPA of all industry fast track graduates with an impressive 3.84. Also, for most of our graduates, it was a little over a year ago when our COVID-19 restrictions were fully lifted. From quarantining, social distancing, and virtual lessons to face masks and seemingly constant schedule changes, your perseverance has brought us here today for this memorable moment. Congratulations. <laughs> These are just a few examples of guts, grit, and glory, values that we share and hold dear in the Johnson College family. Graduates. Today we are here to celebrate your academic accomplishments. It's truly a special day for you and it marks a milestone for your families and friends. Today isn't an end, but the beginning of the next chapter in your life.
Thank you to all the parents, spouses, family members, and friends of the class of 2023 who are here today. We recognize the importance of your support in making this day possible. Please join me with a round of applause for everyone here who helped our graduates get to this moment. Thank you. Joining me on stage, our president and CEO of Johnson College, Dr. Katie Leonard. <laughs> or along with our board of directors chair, Mr. Patrick Dietz. <laughs> and vice chair, Ms. Chris Fendroff. <laughs> Today's commencement speaker, John W. Cosgrove, chief executive offer or officer of All One Foundation and Charities. and Mr. Matthew Mahalik from L.R. Costanzo Construction Services, who is a member of Johnson College's Class of 1985 and will be presenting the alumni address during today's ceremony. <laughs> On behalf of everyone at Johnson College, I would like to say a special thank you to the members of our board of directors for their com continued commitment, guidance, and support they provide the college. Johnson College is successful because of your efforts. Thank you, board members. Now I'd like to recognize the Johnson College program directors and faculty seated with our graduates, along with our dedicated staff members who you've seen all around campus today. These individuals work tirelessly to ensure all our students receive the educational opportunities Orlando S. Johnson helped to define as the mission of our institution. Would the college's faculty and staff please stand and accept the recognition from our audience. I am honored to work alongside such a talented and committed team. Thank you. It is a tradition at our commencement ceremony to hear from the graduates with the highest cumulative GPA. This year, I'm happy to announce there was a tie for achievement among the graduates for the Associate of Applied Science degree programs for the class of 2023. Both graduates earned an impressive 3.8 cumulative GPA. First, I would like to recognize Jacob Banta, who is graduating with a degree from our Automotive Technology Program. Mr. Mark Kazemko, our Automotive Technology Program Director, shared this about Jacob. Jake hit the ground running on the first day he attended classes. He proved to be the type of student who all instructors love to have in their classrooms and labs. He met the requirements to, to participate in the college's industry immersion program and was hired at Berge's Volkswagen Kia Mazda in Larksville, where he completed two semesters of the program. I have no doubt that Jake will be a tremendous asset to the automotive repair industry for years to come. Next. I'd like to recognize Richard Christensen, who is graduating from our Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning Technology Program. Mr. Walter Wood, Program Director of our Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning Technology Program, said this about Richard. Rich was an excellent student during his time here at Johnson College. He demonstrated his ability to be a leader by assisting other students struggling with certain aspects of the work and showing them they could do it. He consistently pushed his peers to be better. Congratulations to both Jacob and Richard for their academic excellence in earning the highest cumulative GPAs among the graduates for the class of 2023. Please join me in a round of applause for Jacob and Richard. And please join me in welcoming Jacob, followed by Richard, to the podium to share a few remarks.
<laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Johnson Class of 2023. I'm pleased to be among the first people to congratulate you of your academic accomplishments. Please give yourselves a round of applause. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, is quoted as saying, patience and perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. I started life with a few difficulties and obstacles. At an early age, I was diagnosed with apraxia and needed both speech and occupational therapy. Apraxia is a neurological disorder that causes difficulty in carrying out a precise physical movements or performing activities that require coordination. For me, this also involved a delay in my speech development. I didn't speak until I was almost four years old. Because of this speech delay, I struggled academically through elementary and middle school, but with a lot of patience, perseverance, and the help of my, with the help of therapists and the support of my family, I overcame my dis disabilities and successfully graduated from Dallas Senior High School in 2021 with honors. I never imagined during those difficult elementary and middle school years that I would be asked to give a speech at my college graduation ceremony. I'm graduating from the automotive technology program here at Johnson College. All of my life, I've been fascinated by automobiles. When I was younger, whenever a car or truck commercial would come on the TV, I would stop whatever I was doing and watch the commercial. Growing up around my dad and my uncles, who are all backyard mechanics and weekend wrench turners, <laughs> I developed an interest in building and repairing cars. I gained a lot of experience working on our family's vehicles. These include, but are not limited to, a 1923 Ford Model T hot rod, better known as a tea bucket, a, 19, a 1990 IROC Z28 Camaro convertible, and a 2005 Dodge pickup truck that are, all, that are all frequently worked on by my dad and I. These vehicles are older and prone to having issues. Boy, they have issues. We've done countless repairs from cooling system work to power steering to brakes, suspension, you name it, we've replaced it. There's never been a dull moment working on these vehicles, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. During my senior year of high school, I wanted to start thinking about what I wanted to do when I graduated. The choice wasn't too difficult, as I knew I wanted to work in the automotive industry. As I began my search for a college, I looked at several schools. I attended a few open houses and college tours, tours and Johnson College really stood out to me. The open house was both interesting and informative. I was impressed by the auto shop, the small class sizes, and the hands-on approach to learning. I've learned a lot here during my two years here, and I've enjoyed taking courses in brake systems, gasoline engine overhaul, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems in vehicles, and computer-aided design with professors Mark Kazemko, also known as Mr. K, Jim Williams, and Cole Goldstein. I felt honored to be selected as one of the first participants in the industry immersion program that allowed me to gain real, real world experience. As Henry Ford once said, getting ready is the secret of success. I chose Johnson College to prepare to succeed in the automotive industry. I hope all of you feel the same way about your industry as well. I think we should all be especially proud from graduating from a technical college in 2023. The trades are a key element in keeping our economy and society functioning. Our, our country needs more men and women who are honest, ethical, knowledgeable, and have the ability to create and build items, repair and replace components, and provide valuable assistance in medical offices. We have, the back we have the training and background now to help improve the lives of our customers, patients, neighbors, and fellow citizens. We work proclaims the model of Johnson College. We can all now get to work and make the world a better place. As I look back over my experiences getting to this day, I realize how much I owe to all the people who have helped me along the way. A young boy who couldn't speak or make precise coordinated movements now giving a graduation speech and became a vehicle technician. I'd like to thank the prof professors and staff of Johnson College for their help over these last two years. Most of all, I'd like to thank my family for their support. I can't believe how fast the time went. It feels like I just walked out of orientation the other day. With the semesters flying by in the blink of an eye, it reminds me of a quote from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you can miss it. I hope that today we can all pause to recognize what we've accomplished and what we owe to those who have helped us to get to this day. My final advice for, to you is to persevere through any obstacles, hard work for yourselves and one another, reach for success, and most of all, enjoy life. Thank you and good luck to all of you for your future endeavors.
Good morning. Johns College graduates of 2023, 20, teachers, staff, family members, guests, and all the others in attendance today. To my classmates, <clears throat> how many of you were thinking just two short years ago, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? Well, here we are, right? We come from all different walks of life, gone through some vigorous training and learning, and hopefully now ready to take on the world. I'd like to talk to you about three things that embody our Johnson College degrees. Starts with love, learn, and live. <clears throat> love. We pondered in life, what are we gonna do? Well, I wanna do something I love. I'm not sure many of us were thinking, well, I'm gonna pick something I dislike and go out and do a career out of that. Although, a lot of our peers from high school, they did, they go out and get jobs, bounce around, maybe get two jobs, then they start wondering, what am I gonna do with life? Which brings us to learn. We all chose to attend Johns College for its vast knowledge and hands-on experience. It's easier to learn by hands-on than just book work, death by PowerPoint. And who are we learning from? Our teachers. Our teachers are those who love what they do. Most of my teachers have jobs in a trade that they're teaching us. So apparently they did love what they did, now they're coming here and teaching us. And live. Now it's our turn. We're gonna go out into the world, put to practice what we have learned, which many of you already are doing. I know a lot of you have internships and you're gonna stick with that company as you continue to learn and grow and then move on up to bigger companies and better. For me, I chose HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Go HVAC! Yeah. I watched my peers learn and grow as you all have done. Now you need to live your life, take pride, and enjoy what you have done in the future. My quote for the day is, as many of you have probably heard, if you love what you do, you won't work a day in your life. Well, I have news for you. I've always loved what I did and I've shed many of blood, sweat, and tears. But I'd rather have doing, it, doing what I love versus just working for the sake of work. So at this time, I'd like to thank the Army National Guard for putting me through college, my teachers for all they have taught me and how they've mentored me, and my family who put up with my long hours, especially my wife who had to do my barn chores morning and night when I had classes, which there were many. And I want to thank you all. And to my classmates, I wish you all flourishing careers that will make you love what you do every day you go to work and to be successful for the rest of your life. Thank you, Jacob and Richard, for representing Johnson College and your fe fellow graduates so well. Now, please join me again in a round of applause in welcoming Dr. Katie Leonard, the college's president and CEO, to the podium to share a few words with our graduates. Thank you, Dr. Engelman. I also want to thank Mr. John Cosgrove for being our 2023 commencement speaker. Welcome our members of the Board of Directors and fellow members of the Johnson College community. Thank you, Jacob and Richard, for sharing those extraordinary words with your fellow graduates. I know they will carry them forward in all that they do. And of course, a very special welcome to you, our graduates, and your families and friends. The past few years have been very unique for all of us, especially our graduates. Through it all though, in true Johnson College fashion, you all rose to the occasion and said, bring it on. Our students, especially all of you here today, worked and learned firsthand just how essential you are to the workforce. All of our students kept the economy moving forward in Northeastern Pennsylvania 
and beyond. We promised you real world learning as part of our mission and it doesn't get any more real world than what you all experienced over the past few years. While our students kept fueling the economy, our amazing faculty kept our students' education moving forward. Coming out of industry, our faculty is well versed in the critical skills needed for our students to succeed in the workplace. This gives our students the opportunity to shine in and out of the classroom. Our industry partners repeatedly share how prepared our students are to enter the workforce. They even assign our students tasks they don't give just anyone, giving our students a competitive edge. Thank you faculty for providing our students with the best hands-on education and finding new ways to successfully teach your classes in person and virtually. You are, you are outstanding instructors and so much more to our students. You are their mentors, their first link to industry, and the difference makers in their careers. Thank you for being the ones to always demonstrate to the world just how we work. Students, today is a celebration of your persistence to graduate and your ability to adapt and succeed in this ever-changing world. Congratulations. Graduates, please take a moment to reflect on your journey and all the twists and turns that brought you to this day. When there were challenges, you persevered. When opportunities presented themselves, you rose to meet them. And when you were tested, you sharpened your skills and advanced to a new level, learning more about yourself and the expectations of the real world along the way. This is the Johnson College way and what we mean when we say we work. It is a toughness and an inner strength and a resiliency found in each and every one of you. It will set you apart in the workplace and in life. And of course, today is no end for each of you. It is only the beginning. Everyone here at Johnson College will be looking forward to hearing about what comes next for you and the success you will have in your chosen field. You have not gotten to this moment alone and you will not achieve anything else in your life alone. In this life, the things that mattered are not contained in any one degree or single accomplishment, but the good you do with them and for others because of them. Go out into the world and live the life you're dreaming of. This is your life. It's your story. Don't let anything stop you. And above all else, do not be afraid to take action. Everything you are connected to has been driven by some action. Being here today means you took that first step. You took action. Keep practicing this. Do not be afraid to fail. Just look at it as a new opportunity in a world full of possibilities. I may not have much advice to give, but I do know this. Every morning we wake up and we have a choice. We can give in and let life happen to us, or we can push forward and make life happen for us. Be that person. Create the life and change you wish to be and see in this world. Do not let anyone stop you from this and never, ever doubt yourself. Remember what you learned here at Johnson College and the lessons you've learned from those you've trusted on this journey. Those skills, advice, and experiences will help carry you forward in your lives and your careers. I know you, Johnson College students. You are doers, you are builders, and you are makers. Go out there and shake it up. Make life happen. You've demonstrated this hardworking spirit time and time again during your educational journey at Johnson College. Class of 2023, you have played an integral role in all of the college's progress and success. You've embodied our motto, what we live by, we work. By taking impossible challenges and turning them into opportunities for success. Thank you for your hard work, your patience, and your perseverance, and for the lasting gifts of your time and your talent. You should be very proud of your role at Johnson College just as we are proud of you. For over 110 years as an institution, Johnson College has provided the highest quality technical education to our region. 
our college has continually met the challenge of enabling individuals to achieve their career goals and become successful members of our community. Over the past few years, we've worked to provide new ways to deliver our hands-on education. That is the great thing about Johnson College. We are skilled troubleshooters that know just how to respond quickly and creatively to find solutions to any problem. Class of 2023, as you embark on the careers for which you have been educated, please take with you the knowledge that you are part of a wonderful legacy. You will represent Johnson College in the workplace and we are confident that you will continue to demonstrate the ideals and accomplishments of all the students that have come before you. It is in this spirit that we are here to celebrate the graduation of this outstanding class, a class alive with knowledge, resilience, ambition, and action, the Johnson College class of 2023. Now, it is my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, John W. Cosgrove, Chief Executive Officer of All One Foundation and Charities. As CEO, Mr. Cosgrove has implemented the distribution of over $35.4 million in philanthropic resources to communities in all corners of Northeastern and North Central Pennsylvania. All One Foundation and Charities supports healthcare programs achieving high impact in mental and behavioral health, access to care for women and children, autism services, substance abuse disorders, and food security. Mr. Cosgrove has nearly 40 years of experience in the private, nonprofit, public, and community service arenas. Before becoming CEO of All One Foundation and Charities in 2016, he was vice president of Condren and Cosgrove, a public relations and communications firm in downtown Scranton. Mr. Cosgrove served as executive director of the Alliance of National Heritage Areas, a Washington DC based national nonprofit association of economic and community development entities designated by the US Congress. He is the former executive director of the Lackawanna Heritage Valley, a state and national heritage area. In 2004, Lackawanna Heritage Valley received the Preserve America Presidential Award, the nation's highest honor for historic preservation, presented in a White House ceremony by the President of the United States. Mr. Cosgrove served in the administration of Pennsylvania Governor Robert P. Casey as the Executive Director of the Governor's Office of Citizen Service. He was instrumental in initiating the National Service Program AmeriCorps in Pennsylvania. He served on the faculty of Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C., and was an early pioneer of the Cairo Student Retreat Program. Mr. Cosgrove is a trustee of the Margaret Briggs Foundation, a member of the National Board of Director of the Ignatian Volunteer Corps, and a former chairperson of the Board of NeighborWorks of Northeastern PA. He is the founding chairperson of First Night Scranton, the Housing Services Collaborative of Lackawanna County, and City Pride. He has received the National J.C. Penney Golden Rule Award and the Founders Honor Roll Award from the Scranton School for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Children. Mr. Cosgrove holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Public Administration from Southeastern University in Washington, D.C., and has completed the Executive Education Programs in Healthcare Management at the Yale University School of Management and in Nonprofit Executive Leadership at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. He lives in Scranton with his wife Eileen and, his, and is the very proud dad of three grown daughters, Bridget, Molly, and Aaron. Now, please join me in welcoming our 2023 commencement speaker, John W. Cosgrove. Thank you very much, Dr. Leonard, for that rather comprehensive introduction. <laughs> Chairperson Dietz, members of the Board of Directors, esteemed faculty, parents, family, and honored guests. It is a genuine, singular pleasure for me to address this august body at this most auspicious academic assemblage. 
and having never before been asked to deliver a commencement address, I find myself compelled to begin my remarks with that age-old Latin phraseology, university tatum committeatum est manos longo talkorum, which I'm sure, as you know, translates to, who is this guy, and how long is he going to talk? <laughs> well, in fact, that is not what it translates to. In fact, it's not even real Latin. In fact, when I was in high school, we had to take a Latin class, which, in fact, I flunked <laughs> twice. But because of something that my Latin teacher said to me all those many years ago, I promised myself that if I ever found myself in a situation like this, where I get to address a super fancy graduation ceremony, I'd at least try to sound smart and try to sound, say something that sounds like Latin. Because what my te Latin teacher said to me all those many years ago is Cosgrove, you're never going to amount to anything because you can't master Latin. And you can't master Latin because you're lazy and because you're not applying yourself. And so I'm very pleased to be here today to serve as your commencement speaker, the graduating class of 2023, and to announce that today that Latin teacher is really quite dead. <laughs> so we win. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> and by the way, the answer to the second question is six minutes. I'm going to be talking to you for six more minutes. So you can hang in at least that long, right? I do want to offer a sincere word of thanks to you all for allowing me to participate in this really incredibly special day. Because you see, it took me 10 years after high school to get my own college degree for a number of reasons, set of circumstances. Most of them was that I really couldn't afford to go right to college. So I went right to full-time work as a hospital orderly to help out my family. And when I finally did earn my degree in public administration, due entirely to the good graces of my then brand new bride, I had already started working for Governor Casey in Harrisburg and I couldn't go back to my own graduation ceremony in Washington, DC. That was just about 35 years ago this weekend I've never worn a cap and gown before, it's pretty cool, but we really, really thank you, I thank you for allowing me to participate in this really special day. And having never before been asked to deliver a commencement address, I can really only speculate that I have three duties today. Number one, it's to congratulate the graduates on their remarkable achievement it's to acknowledge the unwavering support that you all received from the faculty, parents, and various loved ones. And it is to impart some of my own hard-fought, hard-won, and erudite wisdom on how to best successfully navigate the intricacies and complexities of our world. So as for number one, congratulations to each and every graduate on this noteworthy day. For some of you, this achievement was a breeze, and you just sailed through with seemingly little or no effort whatsoever. Well, good for you. <laughs> and let me remind you, nobody likes a show off. But I suspect that for most of you, this achievement comes today following a ton of hard work and obstacles and measurable tests of your own will to succeed. And you have passed 
those tests, and you have earned this day. So congratulations, Johnson Class of 2023. So as for number two, you graduates know in your heart of hearts that you did not get here alone. To the moms and dads, to the grandpas and grandmas, to the husbands and the wives, to the significant others, and even to some of the kids of the graduates. You have all well earned the pride that swells your heart today. So when this is all over and you get to hug your special graduates, take a second to pat yourselves on the back. Now as for number three, it is a massive personal challenge for me to convey to you some pearls of worldly wisdom in just six minutes that's taken me well over 60 years to acquire. But I've done my homework, I understood the assignment, so here goes. Be good to yourselves, be good to others, do good things for the human race. There you go, thanks very much. <laughs> I still have three more minutes left. <laughs> so I'm going to elaborate a little bit on each point. First, be good to yourselves. Truth is, you're not going to be very much good to anybody else unless you're at least trying to be the very best version of you that you can be. When you're at least striving to be in the best possible shape, physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, that's when you'll be of best service to others. Step one on all of that, never allow anyone to define you. Never allow anybody else to define you who you are, what you believe to be true, who you choose to love, how you plan to impact the world, all of that is entirely up to you. Remember that Latin teacher of mine? The one who was so quick to label me as lazy, the one who said I was destined to be a failure? I have to admit, and I hate to admit, that what he said to me really stuck with me for a long time. It wasn't until I experienced a little bit more of life and I came to know myself a little bit better that I came to realize that I wasn't able to master Latin because it was freaking boring. <laughs> and he was a cruddy teacher and really a terrible human being. Don't allow anyone to define who you are. Give yourself a break. Be kind to yourself. Focus most on your own unique gifts and talents. Discover them, understand them, refine them, improve on them, and then give them all away. Give those gifts away in service to others. You know that old saying, it's better to give than to receive? There's a lot of measurable insight in that. Because what it does is it allows you to grasp the ethic of being good to others, the ethic of service. I was raised here in the city in a neighborhood over in West Scranton. I was one of bro uh, seven brothers and sisters. We didn't have much. We certainly weren't rich. And when my father died at a very young age, he left my mother as a widow at 48 with seven kids, the youngest of whom was 11. And what my mom was famous for was instilling in each of us that ethic of service, that ethic of being good to others. And she didn't do it in a particularly profoundly scholarly way or through high philosophy or deep theology. She did it in a simple yet consistent way. 
in our day-to-day -day life in a very hectic household, she was forever imploring us, save some for the next guy. Save some for the next guy. Whether she was talking about Cheerios or hot water or a dry towel or that last piece of pizza, save some for the next guy. My youngest brother actually still says he hopes that reincarnation is real because he wants to come back in the next life as the next guy <laughs> because that guy gets everything. <laughs> but what our mom was doing in her steady, unflappable, consistent way was always telling us, showing us, imploring us to be mindful of other people, to be other-centered rather than self-centered. In every culture of the human condition, there's a salient example of my mom's next guy rule. In Christianity, it's better known as the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In Judaism, it's what you yourself hate, do to no man. In Islam, it's do unto all men as you would wish to have done. And the Native American folks say it very profoundly when they say, live in harmony as we are all related. When you live a life of other-centeredness, when you give of your own talents and treasures for the betterment of others, oddly but surely, you are consistently sending forth a very powerful force for good. A person much smarter than I, Robert F. Kennedy, once said, every time a person stands up for an ideal or strikes out against injustice or simply acts to improve the lot of others, simply acts to improve the lot of others, that person sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those tiny ripples can build a current so strong as to tear down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. And finally, when you do focus on being good to yourselves and good to others, that's where the real impact happens for the good of the human race. On momentous days like today, days of achievement and accomplishment, it is understandable that the sense of the possible is very real. The idea that we can make a difference, that we can make the world a better place, that's palpable. We should aim high. We should reach for the stars. But I want to leave you today with this thought. And it's something I believe with all of my heart. You can and you will do great things. You are each capable of making impressive, significant, and substantial contributions to the betterment of humanity. But those things are very rarely achieved in the grand and the magnificent. Human progress is realized and human suffering is mitigated far, far more often in the consistently achieved aggregate of seemingly smaller, often ostensibly insignificant acts of compassion and concern and kindness. You all, each of us, have the immense power to positively impact the lives of our classmates, the lives of our family, the people with whom we plan to do business, even the people, especially the people we meet on the streets. We can have that impact simply by understanding this, that every one of us, every single human person has the right to be treated with dignity and compassion and respect. Be aware of that power. Be aware that you have the opportunity, you have the capability to uphold goodness, to actively 
advance those rights and to protect those rights for yourselves and for others every day, everywhere you go, right here, right now. I would venture that none of us here considers ourselves to be a human rights activist. That's a title you're not going to find on any of your diplomas. It's not something that any of us are likely to put on our resumes. But when we consider what human rights really are in our day-to-day -day lives, that we are called to actively advance, to nurture and to protect those rights. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, where, after all, do universal human rights begin? In small places, close to home, so small and so close that they don't appear on any maps of the world. Yet they are the world of the individual person, the neighborhood he lives in, the school and college she studies in, the factory, the farm, the office where they work. These are the places where every man, woman, and child seeks equal justice, equal opportunity, equal dignity without discrimination. Unless those rights have meaning there, they have little meaning anywhere. Without concerned individual citizens upholding them close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. Thank you very much, Johnson College, for this amazing opportunity. Congratulations, class of 2023. Be good to yourselves, be good to others, do good things for the human race. Thank you very much. John, Mr. Cosgrove went off script and used his own script. So for those of you that were here for awards night, know that I might fail this next assignment in finding the page that I'm supposed to be on. It was really long. <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Cosgrove. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite Brandon Grandinetti, who is graduating from our Computer Information Technology Program, to the stage. Brandon earned the highest cumulative grade point average among the graduates from the Associate of Science degree programs for the class of 2023. Brandon earned a 3.7 cumulative GPA. Mr. Joseph Polinski, Program Director of our Computer Information Technology Program, said, Brandon has applied himself 100% to learning his craft while at Johnson College. He is helpful to his classmates, polite, respectful, and always does his best at any task he is assigned. I am sure he will be a great addition to the CIT workforce. Now I ask Mr. Cosgrove to join Brandon at the podium as he presents you with a token of our appreciation. Mr. Cosgrove, on behalf of the class of 2023, I would like to present a plaque that reads, Presented in Appreciation by the Class of 2023 to Mr. John W. Cosgrove for the Commencement Address, Johnson College, May like to invite Mr. Matthew Mahalik, the Vice President of Operations for L.R. Costanzo Construction Services, co-owner of B&M Property Development, and an alumnus of the Class of 1985, to the podium to deliver our alumni address.
Good morning, students, faculty, staff, family, and friends. Let me first begin congratulating the class, Johnson College 2023. Excellent job getting here. You should be proud of your accomplishments as you look forward to the future. It is my honor to be here delivering the alumni speech and celebrating this memorable time in your lives. I graduated from Johnson College from the Building Construction Technology Program in 1985. I followed my dad, Tony Mahalik, who completed the carpentry and cabinet making and the architectural drafting and design programs after he served in World War II. To this day, I have fond memories of my time at Johnson College and appreciate the values of quality instilled in me and the relationships built. The relationships you formed while being a student at Johnson College in your memories will last a lifetime. As alumni, you have a support network of not only the faculty and staff, but all the past, current, and future alumni. As you move into the business world, you may have the privilege of working with Johnson College alumni, as I have had at L.R. Costanzo and in my real estate development company. It is an exciting time for both Johnson College and fellow alumni from our company, including myself, who are engaged in the design and construction of the new Ideal Saldi Hall. Two of my 1985 classmates, the project superintendent who was running the entire project, and our estimating manager who worked on the pre-construction and design phase, are where they are today because of their Johnson College education, quality values, and relationships that formed so long ago. I was also fortunate to meet my business development partner at Johnson College 40 years ago, and we have been friends and business partners ever since. So my message to you today is stay connected to those around you, not just through social media and text messages, but also through the Alumni Association. You may be pleasantly surprised one day when you find yourself in a business meeting sitting across the table from Johnson College alumni who have the same quality values as you. Today you are becoming a part of the Johnson College alumni family. And as a fellow alum, I want to let you know that your time at Johnson College gave you the fundamentals and quality values to succeed in the business world. So go do Go apply it whatever way you choose. You will have endless exciting challenges ahead of you and know that we will always be here for you should you ever need our help or guidance. Congratulations once more on becoming a member of the Johnson College alumni family. Thank you, Matthew. Please come back up to the podium. We'd like to present you with this token of our appreciation. And now I would like to invite Mr. Patrick Dietz, the chair of the Johnson College Board of Directors for the 2022-2023 academic year to read the chairperson statement to our graduates. Congratulations, class of 2023. Mr. Cosgrove, six minutes. Mr. Mahalchek, three minutes. Mr. Dietz, if you'll put up with me, two minutes. Then we'll get to what everybody came for today. But what a wonderful day. I hope you keep celebrating after the ceremony. Please remember Johnson College as you go on with your careers. Come back often. Tell your story of college life to younger people Consider being a mentor to younger people. I know I had a few, and they supported me throughout my professional career. Encourage younger people to believe in themselves and not let negativity creep into their thought process. Remember the important people in your journey who supported you here while at Johnson College. Let them know how much you appreciate their support. 
Let this be a stepping stone in your professional career and be not afraid to continue learning. Let me share some quotes from who I think is one of the greatest men of the 20th century. Attitude is a little thing that makes a positive big difference. Maintain a positive attitude. To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. Practice continu continuous improvement. Success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. Maintain your passion. It is not enough that we do our best. Sometimes we have to do what is required. Keep focused on meaningful goals. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage all, is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Welcome feedback and others' ideas. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Believe in yourself and never get in, give in. That was from Winston Churchill. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you for allowing Johnson College to serve you. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Class of 2023, please stand. On the recommendation of the faculty and on behalf of the Board of Directors, by the authority of the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer the degree of Associate in Science or Associate in Applied Science or an Academic Certificate upon the class of 2023. These candidates have honorably fulfilled all the requirements pres prescribed by the college for their degrees and are entitled to all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, it's now official graduates. Please stay standing. Graduates, please approach the stage on my left, your right. When I say your name, please cross the stage and pick up your diploma from Mr. Dietz. Please shake hands with Mr. Dietz and Dr. Leonard as you leave the stage. When you return to your seat, please sit down as others receive their diplomas. Parents and guests, please stay alongside the students. Do not block or stand in front of or next to the stage. Associate in Science degree, Computer Information Technology, Silas Beck, summa cum laude. Xavier Bronson. Hunter Femmer, cum laude. Brandon Patrick Grandinetti, summa cum laude, departmental honors.
Antonia V. Latore, magna cum laude. Matt Malcolm. Owen Martin. Jordan Thomas Navarro. Jonathan Petrasco, summa cum laude. Alexander J. Ristix. Ben Sisto, Computer Information Technology. Spinozzi. Robert Joseph Swiegel. Malachi Upright. Nico Erda. Neil Wonko. Luke Warnick. David A. Williams. <laughs> Physical therapist assistant, Caitlin DeFazio. Maria Elizabeth Dombrowski. <laughs> Anthony Kuchmanik, summa cum laude, departmental honors. <laughs> Natalie Thomas, summa cum laude, departmental honors. Carly Brooke Riefler, summa cum laude. <laughs> Radiologic Technology, Haley Brajuka. <laughs> Leonardo Cabrera. Brianna E. Casey. Skylar Capano. Gina Dellaquila, cum laude. Morgan Jean Doherty. <laughs> Taylor Fisher. <laughs> D 
Danielle Goloski. Ursula Gould. Jeremy Lewis. Jessica McKee, cum laude. Devin Alexandra Nowicki, summa cum laude, departmental honors. Margaret Rooney. Madison Trotta. Christina Wasif. Veterinary Nursing, Stephanie Victoria Bleckler. Madison D. Boyd. Riley Coleman. Laura M. Dominici. Shelby Jenkins. Erica Kanonic. McKenna Maynard. Isandra Paris, cum laude, departmental honors. <laughs> Kayla Ross. <laughs> Alana Lanice Sarita Smith. Cassidy Ann Snyder. <laughs> Cassidy Lynn Weber. <laughs> Kaylin Michelle Zuzio. Associate in Applied Science Degree, Advanced Manufacturing Technology, Alex Kanjar. John Clay Davis. Michael Terrell Lawrence. Richard Michalacci. Congratulations, 
Jason Urbanski. Architectural Drafting and Design, Russell Bedford. Dominic Bolzoni. Matt Scalanger. Evan Smith, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors. Kyle Suchecki. Cameron Van Wert. Matthew Vaughn. Automotive Technology, Jacob Banta, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors. Robert Bernardo. Cody Bettigini. Sean Donlin. Zachary Menicello. Virginia Murray, magna cum laude. Christian Overholtz, magna cum laude. Brandon Jesus Soto. Cody Tolly. Casey Williams. Ryan Williams. Biomedical Equipment Technology, Eric Vavershack. Michael Dean Witt, Departmental Honors. Carpentry and Cabinet Making Technology, Joshua Aguilar Sosa. Alexandra Basiliga. Donovan Brown. Christopher Henderson. Timothy Jackson.
Andrea Marquez, summa cum laude, departmental honors. Jacob Paul McCauley. Damian Miller. Michael Murphy. Joshua Phillips. Stephen Siegfried. James D. Vanderveer, cum laude. Diesel Truck Technology, Daniel Lowell Larry Black. Nate Box. Alexander Scott Carpinetti. Matthew Edward Ennis. Antonio Frias. Justin Hopkins. Madison Matern. Vincent Mark Mead, magna cum laude, departmental honors. Carl Wenninger. Electrical Construction Technology, Brandon Beck. Kyle William Biesecker. Ethan Michael Burnside. Robert John Campen. Michael T. Carroll, Jr. John Claus Walton. Martin Crofton. Eric Demkoski. Charles Fred Dudak, Jr. Colin Geisinger. Matthew Heenan. Lucas Anthony Kelly. Congratulations. 
Matthew Kerrigan. Shahan Khan. Cole Kinsel. Michael Kester. Jeremy D. Lavelle. Mark A. Miller, Jr. Connor James O'Neill. Tucker Michael Pettit, cum laude. Jonathan Taylor Romiti. Peter Anthony Sabia the third. Jacob Spencer. Matthew J. Speechley, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Jake Matthew Sullivan. Tiranitsa Oleksandr. Orlando Michael Valentin. Ryan William Visotsky. Josh James Walton. Electronic Engineering Technology. Brianna Noel Curtis, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Omar Jose Modesto. Reese Roberts. Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning Technology, Ian Christopher Baker. Skyler Lee Boyer. Nicholas Brooks. Donovan M. Burdick. Nicholas Chopko, cum laude. Richard A. Christensen, Jr., summa cum laude, departmental honors. Robert Davis, cum laude. Mark Dominic Del Vecchio. Jordan S. Dewey. Jordan. 
Kevin Fitzgerald. Christopher Hemingway. Dustin Highhouse. Chandler Holmes, magna cum laude. Thomas Huffsmith, cum laude. Logan Thomas Justice. Bryce Joseph Kelly. Mason Patrick Cordish. William Kovaleski. David Mawson. Mark McGough. Mason Miller. David Morgan. Ethan Nanowitz. David Neiman, summa cum laude. Brian Peter Pernitis. Cole Shutter. Anthony Allen Serpico. Hunter Sherman. Kyle Strzelkowski. Heavy Equipment Technology, Jonathan Gillison, Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Dylan Hartman. Mark Nicholas Mead. Logistics and Supply Chain Management. Matthew Harold Beavers, Magna Cum Laude, Departmental Honors. Jordan Siegel, Magna Cum Laude. Welding, Fabrication, and Manufacturing Technology. Jeffrey Gallagher. <laughs> Kevin Goditis. Adley Stephen Metterick, Departmental Honors. Tim Walsh. Certificates.
Building, Property, and Maintenance Technology. Tanya Tazim Ahmed, Departmental Honors. Joshua Capellan. Diesel Preventative Maintenance Technology, Joseph Elliott Acevedo. Matthew Jones. Welding Technology, Terry John Acker, Jr. Isabella Rose Bartolotta, Departmental Honors. <laughs> Stephen John F. Thimiades. Joseph Tyler Orlowski. Adriana Sandy. Marcus Vergara. Rise Continuing Education Program Computer Support and Security Specialist, Jean Vinell Cassius. Melanie Costanzo. Jackson Phils Ami. David Shar. <laughs> Rise Continuing Education Program Medical Assistant, Daphne Casius. Jennifer McGrath Beadle. Patricia Adeline Mejia Solorio. Tahara Muhammad. Ariel Spitzer. Okay, we have one more person we'd like to recognize today. One of our very own faculty members, Mr. Mike Visbisky, completed his degree. He completed his degree in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technology earlier this year. And I'm gonna go off script a little bit and just say, because I hear from all of the students. Our students are very honest, and we have board mix and mingles where they get a chance to share feedback with the board and staff, um, and they also are very honest in their evaluations, which we appreciate. And time and time again, 
our faculty members get called out specifically for how they mentor our students and care for our students and really give them that unique Johnson College hands-on experience because our faculty here don't just, they're not just teachers, they're really passing on the love of their craft and I think that's embodied in someone like Mr. Vespisky. So let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs> And congratulations to all of our graduates. We're so very proud of you. Now graduates, please stand and face your family and friends. <laughs> Graduates, please turn your tassels to the left. And now, everyone, please celebrate as I present to you the Johnson College Class of 2023. Graduates, please take your seats. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you again. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Class of 2023, you are now armed with one of the most important tools needed to forge your path ahead. It's not the diploma itself that counts. It's what you've learned along the way and what you do with the education you received. Your future is in your hands, no one else's. Seize the opportunity as only a Johnson College graduate can. Congratulations to all of you. On behalf of the Board of Directors, Administration, and the faculty and staff of Johnson College, thank you for attending today's celebration. At this time, I ask the platform party, graduates, faculty, and members of the Board of Directors to please stand in preparation of the exit procession. Guests, Please remain seated during the exit procession while we process back into the Moffitt Center student gym. After that, we welcome you to join our graduates, stay for pictures, and celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2023.